Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about my level 50 DPS character that I've just got to level 50 and talk about the skills that I picked and why I picked them. But before I get into it, I'm giving away some Lucent 2875 on screen. Subscribe to the channel, hit notifications if you want to. Like the video, leave me a comment down below telling me your build if you have daggers and crossbow because I am trying to learn and change up the things that I'm doing. However, going through the build, I feel like this was the best choice for me right now. So first and foremost, I'm just going to go in and show my character info right here. You can see that there's a lot of green stuff here. I have literally just hit level 50. One of these rings here, very, very useful because it gives me added attack speed plus dexterity plus five. If you didn't know how to get that, you can get it from the Lillagraph book. And essentially, you just need to craft all four of the green rings to be able to get the blue ring, which I already have. So if I go to this complete here, ring of impact, ring of precision, ring of willpower, ring of robustness, and you get the violent signet very very useful dexterity attack speed build which obviously goes very well with daggers and crossbow just wanted to throw that out there right at the start other things you should be looking for um is any kind of armors that have things like the strength or dexterity points so for instance if i was a tank or something i would go probably go for this with the strength plus three but there are some things here that will have like wisdom on if you need a mana build and perception and you know strength there should be some dexterity stuff like this so for instance i would probably go for this i'd lose a lot of health but i would get huge boost to my dexterity which would be able to put me up probably closer to the movement speed of three percent at dexterity 50. So you are looking to get armors and weapons that have these stat buffs to get you higher in each single stat to get you the bonuses of when you hit those 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Those are the things you should be looking for. Now, there are probably absolutely perfect best in slot for every single build. But for right now, as you're starting, and for me myself, I'm just going to be looking for stats I know I'm going to find a lot of armors when it comes to world bosses and dungeons and stuff like that and opening chests. So I'm not too worried right now. However, if you're looking to get into DPS, crossbow and um, daggers, you want to get things with dexterity buff more than anything because dexterity is pure damage. Um, but you will probably sacrifice a lot of health. So you have to be very careful with how you play. However, this is the armors that you should be looking for. I'm sorry, I don't have like specific things to actually go and grind for but I myself haven't really done any kind of research into it. However, there is a peaceful boss for me coming up called Kawazan. And Kawazan has a chance of dropping these daggers, twilight daggers. Melee critical hit chance increases by 250 at night and by 125 during the day. I don't see any daggers being better than that for DPS. Personally, I haven't really seen anything, but you also want to be looking at that offhand double attack chance. You want that to be as high as possible because obviously you're always carrying two crossbows, two daggers. The offhands, you know, for both stats need to be as high as possible so you could do more damage. For instance, my crossbow over here has a 22% chance and my current daggers have a 25% chance. So those are the things you should be looking at when building into your DPS. When it comes to skills, I haven't quite grasped everything yet, but these are the ones that I'm going for. First and foremost, I want to show this one off here, the Mother's Nature's Protest. This is under the skill specialization of the crossbow over here. You need to put it in here. So this will allow you to ply the enemies with Gale and do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go in and read every single tooltip, but essentially what you're going to be doing here is has a 22% chance to apply Gale for six seconds, which is a debuff. This needs to be activated, and this is why I wanted to show you it. So if I use my key here, it's now constantly active. I haven't used it enough yet to see if it will deactivate in any way, shape or form, but you're better off having it activated. Let's put it that way. So when it comes to the skills, I pretty much have them in the rotation that I think I want to have them in. And we're going to activate this, and then we're going to use all of these. And then we're going to go back and activate this, then activate this, and then this, this and this. This is to charge in. This is to get your mana and health messed up. I'll show you that as well. And then this is obviously always activated. So with these lightning infused swords, you can add a weaken of thunder cloud onto an enemy. This is going to tie to this move here, the thunder clouds bombing. You do big, big damage and even more damage when something is 
having weakened thunder clouds on them to get this to actually proc essentially you want to press your ability and then you can see there's like an eight second countdown the next time you press that it will put the weakened debuff on an enemy before you activate it again you want to build everything else into the damage because otherwise you're just wasting it so instead of waiting for it to go all the way down as section you want to start activating all these buffs up until about this point you can throw this in but you want to activate this and then this and then maybe that after and we'll show you that as well so the next ability is the selfless diffusion increases offhand double attack chance which is what we were just talking about with the weapons so you're going to get more offhand double attacks basically if you're lucky it will also apply weaken as well so very very good move and very very quick to activate then we have detonation mark which i actually haven't used yet i've literally just put it onto my build and it says deals 230 percent of base damage plus 54 damage and has a 100 percent chance to weaken and mark the target for three seconds damage accumulates until the mark ends at which point the mark explodes and deals bonus damage to the target equal to 40 percent of the total accumulated damage so what we're essentially going to do is putting the thunder clouds on them and then doing a big big hit so if this is also locked onto them and you use this it's going to do incredible amounts of damage and then on top of that it's going to blow up and do a lot of damage too then we go over to this one here where is it the fatal stigma leaves a stigma on the target that decreases healing received for 60 percent at the end of the duration the target takes x amount of damage each stack of the user's poison or thunder clouds active on the target increases damage by 5.1 percent so you'll activate this you'll pop these two then you'll activate this again to put the thunder clouds on and then we're going boom 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 hopefully if you have enough time if you don't want to throw this in you go from here to here and then put that after this is the big 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 boy damage which we're going to talk about now annihilating barrage shots shoot arrows with both hands 16 times at each and uh, you know what? it's probably just better to show you it just goes like this and if there's a lot of people around you you will hit them all for a lot of damage i'm not going to go into the who what's where's and why's but it's just a phenomenal skill probably the most damaging skill that i know of in this game thunder clouds bombing again huge damage if they have the thunder cloud effect on them even more damage then we have this move over here where's it gone where's it gone where's it gone the cleaving moonlight attack the target three times and do x amount of damage the number of attacks increases up to four times upon the offhand weapon activation so this is just going to be kind of like your follow-up to all your big damage just to continue damage and just you know get involved get involved then we have the knife throwing which i haven't even updated yet i meant to yesterday but i forgot so this is just an extra little thing that you can throw some in you can also as well pull enemies with this if you really wanted to i don't know why you would but you can then we also have knife throwing which i haven't upgraded yet but essentially this is just kind of like an ender to your whole dps combo just going to be a quick little blast of damage and then also as well on top of that to go with it quick fire fires an arrow three times that deals x amount of damage each hit victims of the users weaken effects take more damage so you've already played your whole hand here with your thunder clouds doing big 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 damage you've applied weakness you're going to do a quick little blast of damage then a knife throw and then this and you're pretty much sorted and then this is to charge in and this is your mana so over here for the mana um here consumes 450 health to restore 410 mana the more obviously you upgrade this you'll get a nice balance of getting more mana recovered than the amount of health you are losing and just for the charge you know it's basically just a charging move behind the target and bind them pretty goddamn simple this is the defense skill i use the rapturing parry i don't know which one's better out of these i haven't really looked into them but this one has just been working great for me i'm not going to go into it you can you know it's just there I, I don't really care that much about the defense stuff i just use whichever one's best at the end of the day i'm just defending <laughs> Then we have the passive so the passives were pretty complicated for me to get through i've really went through a whole bunch of different ones i've been transferring the skills backwards and forwards to get a nice setup that i want and i think i have kind of found it so for the first one over here increase bonus damage by 10 and stamina regen by 3.6 definitely going to be worth it more damage better stamina regen then we have the swords up here increases critical damage by 14.4 percent with dps you just want to have more damage 
So this is a an exceptional thing to add to your build. Then we have the Destructive Fang. Unattacking targets affected by the user's poison or thundercloud effects has an 80% chance to reduce the target's magic, melee, and ranged defense. So basically, hopefully, you're just going to weaken them even further than they've already been weakened. It's just going to make you do more damage. So this perk here, the Murderous Energy, is something that I was debating on because it's more for the poison version of this. So if you take the lightning infusion off, it's inject venom, and it does similar damage and similar debuffs, but it's poison instead of thunderclouds. This will directly buff that dramatically, but it also puts the duration of the thundercloud to 24%, and then the what it's supposed to do is increase the poison damage. However, we're just using thundercloud, so I just threw this on. I might change this out. I'm not sure yet, but this works kind of for me i guess then we have assassin's instincts magic melee and range critical hit chance increased by 194 if you're doing dps you want your critical hit chance as high as possible and this just definitely helps that a lot then we have nature's power using a mobility or movement skill increases bonus damage by 20 and skill damage by 19 for three seconds now this is another one that i'm confused on because i haven't I don't know, but I'm assuming this here is a mobility um, move because you are, yeah, skill type mobility. So every time you are dashing in and binding people, you are getting this buff. I've never really noticed it personally, but obviously it does work side by side with mobility skills. So, you know, for me, what I usually do is activate this, then I charge in, activate all these, activate that again, do the thunder clouds, and then go through the rest of the skills. This means that I'm getting as much damage as I possibly can. Then we have Ambidexterity. Increases offhand weapon max damage by 26. Attacking with offhand weapons increases magic, melee, and ranged critical hit chance by 90. More crit hit using your offhand weapon, which is built into the actual build naturally. That's very, very important. Then we have Bloodlust. On attack skill hits, skill damage increases by X amount. Adds one stack of Bloodlust per attack, stacking up to 10 times. At 10 stacks, critical damage increases by X amount for 3 seconds. So you are building pretty much into crit hit chance, as well as having, you know, a good AoE attack and, you know, be able to take out as many people as possible with your little twirly crossbow thing. Where is it gone? This one here, the <laughs> annihilating barrage shot. So these are the skills that I'm using. A couple of things I might swap out, but I've noticed, well, I haven't noticed everything yet because I haven't done the detonation mark, but I've noticed that my damage went up dramatically when I started using this build. When it comes to weapon mastery, you obviously just want to go over what you can to get more damage, more crit hit stuff. Just generally the bottom for both of them. So crossbow and daggers across the bottom. You're just going to get more damage, etc, etc. So for skill specialization over on the daggers, we have the cleaving moonlight. We're going to use consecutive use so you can use it another time within three seconds of using it. So once you get through your DPS rotation, you can hit it pretty much twice and do double or whatever it is because it's like multiple hit. You do it twice, basically. <laughs> then we have the effect accumulation. Thunder clouds last for six seconds, decreasing melee ranged magic endurance stacked up. To debuff <laughs> then we have the lightning infusion as we've seen before so it adds weakened thunder clouds effect to all of your attacks then we go over to the thunder clouds bombing which is your big damaging move after you put thunder clouds onto enemies and we've got thunder clouds bombing so it do x amount of damage and removes the target thunder clouds effect so you remove it from them but the damage is amplified 15 percent against monsters and then a whole bunch of other stuff there if they are weakened by thunder clouds they take even more damage then we have cooldown reduction because you want this up as often as possible. For Fatal Stigma, we go with the AoE damage. So it deals the same damage to targets within a 3 meter radius. So if you're surrounded by a whole lot of enemies, you're using your crossbow spinny move. This also will be able to damage all of them. And we have damage increase, increase the damage. Then on the crossbow side of it, for quick fire, we have the minimum attack count changes to 4 attacks. So instead of doing it 3 times, it does it 4 times. And we have on a critical hit, cooldown decreases by 10%. This is a really good skill to have up as often as possible. And then we go down to detonation mark. So this changes it to detonation mark from mortal mark. 
And essentially what that does, it's bonus damage is removed and accumulated damage increases by 40%. So you're just doing more base damage and that's pretty good. Mother's Nature's Protest, as we saw, it adds Gale debuff to the attack. And then over here for Mana Exchange, we're going to have upon use, health costs increase by 100%, cooldown increases by 100%, and mana recovery increases by 100%. So you're sacrificing health to get a whole bunch of buffs everywhere else. Then with the Annihilation Barrage shot from Merciless Barrage to Annihilation Barrage shot, and it's attack every enemy within a 6 meter radius area without casting time. Then we have Gale. Apply Gale. Apply that same debuff. I do want to go into these more in depth, but I feel like the video will go on too long. So if you just look at these, put them on your skills as well, then you can read and work them out. But in my opinion, these are all the best for everything on your setup. If you want to use Guardians, I suggest using the Green Ranger Elowen, which basically binds all enemies. So if you're in a bit of a pickle and you know you need to get out of there or something, you can just bind all the enemies and run away. But also it increases your critical hit chance by 500. So, you know, if you want to do even more damage, you pop this and then you just you just launch all your attacks. Now I'm going to keep it a buck 50 with you. My rotations are not great in general because I've been playing tank so much, which is basically just stand still. So we are going to hopefully see all of this stuff in action. I'm trying to remember what my key binds are. So if this is that one, okay. Okay, I've just swapped all my things around as well. So essentially we're going to go in, we're going to place this. We're going to do all of these. We're going to put that back on. We're going to do this. And then we're going to pop this, pop this, pop this, pop this. And as you can see, there's just a huge amount of damage. And I'm only at like just under half my mana just from one rotation. You can see all the numbers on screen. I really wish they had like a DPS meter because I think it would just make everything so much more, you know, just, just have more things happening, you know, on screen. That's all I want is just more things on screen of all the damage numbers and just absolutely annihilate enemies look at look at it look at all the numbers so actually i don't know how incredible this dps is it's way more dps than i've seen in the game for me personally and that's just a simple rotation and obviously you know when you're in a real life scenario well a real game life scenario you're gonna have to be running around and moving and stuff this is just on a target dummy i'm sure that people who are excelling at dps will be able to take this build and make it better so let me know what you think down below in the comments section about this build what things do you think i should change let me know thank you for watching i've been easy now you guys have been awesome